Does sparkling water actually taste different to regular water? Well, let's find out. I wanted to do a blind test. I used my soda stream to carbonate some water. Then I poured it into a glass and left it in the fridge next to another glass of regular unbubbled tap water. I waited a few days because when a carbonated beverage is left open, the carbon dioxide gas, which gives the drink its bubbles, will be released into the atmosphere, leaving the liquid flat, no bubbles. And here they are. I had my wife either mix them around or not, I don't know, and give them different labels so that I no longer know which one of these glasses contains which liquid. Does it contain the unbubbled one, the just regular tap water, or does it contain the tap water that I bubbled with my soda stream, the carbonated version, which is no longer uh, got carbon dioxide in it, not a lot of it anyway, because there are no bubbles in these glasses. Um, okay, so I've got number one here. I'm gonna start by trying this one. One makes sense, so I'll just give it a give it a, give it a go. That tastes remarkably like cold tap water. I think that this one is uh, the regular tap water, if I were to have a guess, but if this one tastes more normal, will know that I'm, I might be wrong, or uh, maybe perhaps that this video doesn't have a leg to stand on. Let's try this one then. This is number two, which again, I don't know which one it is. Ooh, yeah, this one is absolutely the, the, the one that I bubbled. I, I would describe it as tasting, not sour, maybe a little bit bitter. It definitely tastes different to this one. I am uh, going to check now the message that my wife sent me to see if I was right. Okay, yep, so A is two. So this one is in fact the one that I bubbled. That was really easy to tell which one was which. I'm actually shocked at how much different these two taste. Feel free to try this one yourself and let me know if you found that it's obvious as I did. There are no bubbles in this one anymore. Why does it taste so different? Adding bubbles to a drink is a reasonably new invention, but it does go back to the 18th century. In 1740, the scientist William Brownrigg had the idea to add carbon dioxide to water to make it bubbly for consumption, but he didn't patent his idea and it didn't really start happening until a few decades later when in 1767, another scientist, Joseph Priestley, did it and then was then credited as the inventor of carbonated water. Before this, there weren't any fizzy drinks at all. Some alcoholic beverages like beer might have had a slight bubble if drunk and fresh due to the process of fermentation, but by today's standard, it would have been flat. But over time, carbonation, or the process of injecting carbon dioxide gas into beverages, took off. It didn't take long for people to start adding flavoring to their fizzy water and soft drink or soda was created and became a massive global industry. This isn't actually the first time I've covered soft drink on this channel. Check out my video on the surprising story of how Fanta was invented. It's in the description below. But why does carbonated water taste different? For the bubbles to remain in a liquid, it has to be sealed. Otherwise, the higher pressure of the carbon dioxide in the liquid will release into the atmosphere, causing there to be no bubbles or causing the drink to go flat. But that means the carbon dioxide leaves the liquid. Yet it still tastes different. What's going on? Well, when carbon dioxide gas is injected into liquid water, most of it remains as carbon dioxide. But some of it reacts with the water. This chemical reaction produces a new chemical, carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is, well, an acid. It causes the water to become a little more acidic. Acids often taste sour or bitter without adding anything else to it. Lemon juice is quite acidic and tastes sour. Coffee is also acidic and it tastes bitter. Carbonated water is still slightly acidic, so it tastes a little bitter. I want to examine the pH of the water in these glasses. pH is the scale that we use to see how acidic or basic something is. You might be wondering what pH stands for. You might have learnt in school that it stands for potential of hydrogen, but actually we don't know what it stands for. The person who conceived the pH scale wasn't super clear and uh, so it's a bit of a mystery. There's probably a video for another time, but for today I'm going to examine the pH of these ones. How am I going to do that? Well, I have got 
Bromothermal blue, this uh, is usually used for determining the acidity or alkalinity of a fish tank and um, usually put it into a vial, not into the fish tank itself, but I'm going to just put it into here. The more basic something is, the more blue it's going to be. Our tap water, just from keeping fish at this house before, is a little bit alkaline, so a little bit basic. Uh, and if it is more acidic, it'll be more yellow. So more blue for alkaline, green for neutral, and yellow for acidic. So let's see if we can see a difference here. I'll start by adding it to the one that I know is just regular tap water. That's this one. Okay, I'll give it a stir. And that is looking pretty blue. So I would say that this is a uh, greeny blue. There's a bit of green tinge to it. I would say this is slightly basic. Now my hypothesis is that this one will come out as uh, more of a yellow. I haven't actually tested this yet, so I'm a little nervous to see whether this will make it into the final video. Uh, but because it's got that carbonic acid, it should be more acidic. So I'm, I'm hoping to see more of a yellow. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay. Whoa, check it out. This is clearly acidic. Look at the difference in the color there. This one, I wouldn't want to put a fish in it. I would say this is uh, closer to a six than a seven. That is really, really yellow. Check that out. So uh, th they started with the same tap water and then I just carbonated this one and I have been left with a fairly acidic glass of water here. I'm not going to drink this, now I'm going to tip them down the tap. Don't drink bromothermal blue, but there we go. This one, clearly more acidic. Our carbonated water, much more acidic. Okay, but is carbonated water bad for you? Well, not really. When it doesn't contain high amounts of sugar, high fructose corn syrup or other sweeteners, carbonated water is almost the same as just water. However, because of the carbonic acid, it is more acidic than water. Acid is bad for our teeth, which I covered in my video on why we've been told that sugar is bad for our teeth, and there's a link to that in the description. Acid on our teeth causes demineralization, and it makes the enamel wear away, which can lead to problems. Though, unless you're letting the unflavored sparkling water sit in your mouth for a really long time, it's probably not going to be a problem. However, the best thing that people can drink is regular water, but everything in moderation. So yes, carbonated water tastes different, not just because of the bubbles, but because during the carbonation process, some of the carbon dioxide reacts with the water to become carbonic acid, which we taste as being slightly bitter. I was surprised to learn this, and I assumed that once carbon dioxide returned to the atmosphere, that only water would remain. And I think it's pretty cool that that's not the case here. Thank you for watching this video. If you learned something or you liked it, please feel free to let me know with the like button. And if you'd like to leave a comment, I'd love to read it. If you'd like to look into any of the resources I used in making this video, as always, there's a link to them in the description below. And if you're interested in other videos that inspire in me a sense of curiosity and wonder, I invite you to subscribe to That's Pretty Cool. But for now, enjoy your sparkling water, take care, stay curious, and I will see you next time.